So in this tutorial, what I want to do is um, start adding our three elements. So I'm going to actually start adding the chair. Now, before I do that, just to keep things sort of cleaned up, as it were, what I'm going to do is uh, select these and just put a backdrop on there. So if I go tab, I'm going to go uh, backdrop. Here we go. And this just creates a nice backdrop for us. I'm just going to make, give us a bigger area to work to working in the node graph here okay so that gives us a backdrop and then with the backdrop what you can do is just give it a, a, a label so if I double click on backdrop here we go I can have a label here I'm just going to call this camera track okay so it just separates this area up. and what you'll notice when we use a backdrop we can kind of move this around and that makes things a bit easier for us to manage okay so now what I want to do is bring in my 3d element now when you're bringing in a 3d element the first thing you want to do is create a scene so we've, we've kind of gone through this in the previous tutorial where uh, I sort of introduced working with 3d elements so I would advise you to watch that first before looking at this okay because I'm going to go through this a little bit quicker Okay, so that's our scene. Now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to bring in our uh, 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 I'm going to bring in our chair. Okay, um, yeah. So uh, I'm going to go right click. Sorry, I'm going to go tab. I'm going to use a read geo node. Okay, uh, and then I'm going to read in. Uh, sorry, I'm going to read in our uh, what we created was new chair two version two FBX. Here we go. So I'm going to read that in. Okay, uh, and then what I want to be able to do is move this around in our scene. So to allow us to move around our scene, I'm going to use a transform geo node. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to put the object through the transform geo node, okay, into our scene, okay. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an axis node. Uh, now what caps lock on here, right? Okay. Here we go. I'm going to use an axis node to control this. Uh, transform geo okay so what does that look like in 3d space so what I want to do is just um, uh, uh, yeah what I want to do is just uh, have a look at this in 3d so I'm just gonna go into here let's have a look what we've got and I'm just gonna take off this over here turn that off okay brilliant so I should have a chair in there somewhere. Uh, what I need to do is obviously I want to add a fong material to that as well. So I'm going to use it's just a uh, so this is just a fong shader that I'm feeding into here to kind of make that chair uh, come alive. Okay. Uh, so I've been trying to look to see where my chair is. Uh, my chair is actually uh, extremely large compared to um, uh, compared to uh, this here. Okay. Now uh, the reality is that it's, it's probably the point cloud data that's out out of sync in terms of scale because we never really defined what the scale of the scene was. So Nuke doesn't know that from the camera track. We haven't really given it that information. So so while all this stuff is is correct in terms of proportion to each other, it, it has no real world proportion. So uh, if I zoom out you'll see that we have got the chair seat here okay um, yeah uh, uh, and so what I will do just to make things keep things simple is I'm just going to rescale this chair to fit this scene okay uh, now um, what I need to do is uh, as I mentioned before uh, if I go into the regeo node uh, the chair is made up of two objects which are going to have different materials applied to them and um, you'll see that I can select between the two objects but obviously what I want to do is have those two objects uh, both in my scene at the same time so in order to do that if I just select these three nodes that's the material the uh, regeo and the transform geo if I read those in select those okay again connect that to my axis connect that to my transform here okay now what I should be able to do is in this node select the legs so now I've got both parts and both parts of the model are, are selected now if I 
uh, then go and manipulate it. So if I click this axis here, you can see, let me just move it. By clicking on this axis here, you can see that we've got this axis here. Look, there we go. All right. OK, uh, I don't want to move that, but you can see I'm moving both. This axis is manipulating both of these transform geos together. So it's locking them together, which is just what I want. OK, now what I want to do is scale this down so that all of this, this chair actually fits inside side our, our scene, which is this these set of point clouds here. OK, so let's do that. Right. OK. Uh, I need to, so to get scale, I need to go, I think it's uh, control, yeah, control shift. Okay, so hopefully, now it's a bit fiddly, this bit, but hopefully it will be all right. There we go. So I can make that quite small. I'm going to need to make it smaller than that, but I'll zoom in before I do that. Okay, so again, control shift. It can get a bit temperamental, this, when you're using it uh, in terms of the display. Uh, so a little bit of learning on that one. Okay, and then what I want to do, I'm zooming in again. And still, again, I need to continue making this a little bit uh, smaller. It doesn't always update the handle in the viewer, unfortunately. Right, okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own uh, scan line renderer here. Okay, uh, let's do that. Uh, so. so this is the renderer that's going to render this scene. Okay. Great. Uh, and then uh, I'm rendering this uh, from this camera. So I'm going to use this camera here to inform the render. OK. And you can instantly see, OK, this is making sense now. This is our camera. This is the chair. This is the point cloud. OK. And notice how uh, one thing that's kind of quite helps us quite a lot is uh, you can see where these point clouds are sort of clustering on the floor here. Our chair is on the floor. OK. So now what we want to do is uh, and then what I'll do is also as a just to help me out this background arrow here so that's that allows us to put a, a background we don't have to but this allows us to put a background on this scene so what I'm going to do is just take the undistorted footage and apply that as a background to the scene now let's have a look what we're getting through this camera so I've attached that to the viewer now uh, and then what I'm going to do is look through it in 2d so you can see that we now have uh, a chair uh, in our scene, okay, um, and and what I can do is uh, again, I'm probably going to want to sort of see this in 3D and 2D at the same time. So um, one way to do this is simply to create a separate viewer. So again, I'm just going to create another viewer. Uh, so as soon as I create another viewer node, you'll notice that uh, we have viewer one, viewer two. There's two tabs there. I can see both of them there. OK, if I connect this viewer up to our scene, OK, that allows me to kind of see the, the, the chair and the scene and the layout in this view. And then I can see the result in this view. And all I want to do then is just literally if I pop this out. So I'm just going to it wants to try and dock it if I move it here. If I just put this on my other screen, so I'm going to put this on my other screen, then drag it back in, it, it then doesn't have a, uh, a a huge desire to try and dock. And I've got both my views up. Or I could just dock them side by side in this view here if I wanted to as well. Um, uh, it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. OK, so just let's just adjust this. So. I mean, this just allows me to see this in multiple views and, and get an idea of what's going on. Now, if I select the axis, what I can then do is kind of move this chair around, okay, all right, and, and kind of get it in position, uh, the position that I want. Uh, again, I'm going to move this back to frame one, just because that's my starting frame. And notice how the chair is moving with our scene. So that's, you can see that, it, that our 3D element is all locked in there. That's all working. And that's due to the fact that the camera that we're shooting from 
uh, that we're, we're rendering, that we're using, that we're basically shooting our scene from, is the camera that was generated by the camera tracker, okay? Which is the, the virtual camera that was generated by the camera tracker. Okay, so I'm going to uh, just move this into a sort of position here. I might want to rotate it actually a little bit. Um, let's do that. Uh, uh, here we go. Ooh. And in, in fact, what might even make things easier is in this view here, if uh, because at the moment I'm looking through a different camera here, OK, I'm kind of looking. It's like the equivalent of the perspective camera in Maya, but it's not the same camera as this. Hence, the views don't line up. What might help me out is if I actually select camera one, so I'm looking through camera one, and then I can literally move it from the same perspective. So that might help me out even more in terms of me understanding what I'm doing and relating that to my scene. OK, so I'm going to kind of put the chair. Let's have a look. I might move the chair back a little bit. I'm trying to avoid putting the chair in a place where I've got things in the foreground overlapping it. It's not a problem, but obviously in order to make that work, I'd have to then go and do some roto, which would be an extra job. And uh, I don't want to make this tutorial uh, you know, any larger than it is. So I think I might just stick with that. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. OK, so. OK, so, um, yeah, that's that's my chair in my scene. OK. Um, and at the moment, it's completely dark. Um, I can try and do some adjustments to the to these fong materials, but it's pointless doing that at the moment because there is no light in our scene. So that's really our next job is to then start lighting it. Um, finally, what you might want to do is just adjust the scale. I, I think this might be a touch small. So I'm kind of tempted to make it a bit bigger. Let's just see how that looks. So if I click on here, sorry, click on my axis. Yeah. One of the things that's happening is when I go control, control shift, it's not always changing the uh, handles uh, accordingly. So that's not always uh, brilliant. Uh, uh, yeah. OK. Um, so let's make that a little bit bigger. You can even adjust it in this scene, so that's working out quite well. I think that I think that's about right. I'm happy with that. Okay, so that's our chair composited in our scene. In fact, I'm still convinced that that's a bit too small. I might just try and make it a little bit bigger. I'm probably fettling a bit too much now. One of the problems is it doesn't update live, which is a bit annoying as you adjust it. But anyway, so I'm going to stick with that. Uh, and then finally, all I'm going to do, uh, so we'll add some light in the next tutorial. But all I'm going to do for the moment is um, uh, I'm going to just put another backdrop element on this just to keep our stuff organized. OK, uh, in fact, sorry, let's do this correctly. If I select all of this. Let's remove this. If I, go, if I'm, I'm, I don't need this view anymore, so I'm going to delete that viewer. OK, I'm going to remove this uh, and I can just take that away. Uh, I go backdrop. OK, and here I'm going to add a label and call it chair. So this is where the chair is created. OK, uh, and again, that, that's all kind of connected and working together now. Let's just move this fong down a bit because it's kind of overlapped a bit there. OK, so um, that's our chair in the scene. Uh, in the next tutorial, we shall add some lights.